What's up guys? This has got to be the most exciting product I've ever reviewed on this channel. Let's go take a look. All right, so I don't want to keep you guessing too long about what this is. So let's just open the box here. I've been waiting for something like this for a very long time. So this is the Top Don T-Ninja 1000 OBD Key Programmer. Ooh, let's take out this big behemoth. Look at that. This is crazy. Key racing, remote learning, all keys lost, pin reading. This, <laughs> this is awesome. All right, so some of you tech nerds are probably like, well, why do I need that? What's the big deal with this? If you've ever lost your spare key to your vehicle and it's a newer vehicle that has the key chip inside the key or even push to start, these keys require programming. They have a chip inside of them that communicate with the car so the car knows that these keys are for it and it will allow the car to start. Now the problem is, is when you lose your spare key or your second key, when you go to the dealership to get a a new key it's usually followed by a uh, very angry conversation or very angry back and forth because try and take advantage of you and so they'll try and get you to pay a thousand dollars fifteen hundred two thousand dollars it's so out of control that the price range between like 200 and it can go all the way up to five grand it's ridiculous they're definitely taking advantage of people who are looking to get a new key because they know that you won't be able to get a new key by just walking into Home Depot. One time my grandfather came to visit us in Jacksonville from Orlando and we went to Hannah Park because there was a picnic going on. And so he went on the little paddle boats. So he had the key inside his chest pocket. He was so fascinated with the water that he leaned over the boat to take a closer look at the murky water and the key fell out of his pocket and into the water you know he was tempted to jump in after the key but he was definitely stranded in jacksonville so one of the first things he did was they contacted a local toyota dealership to ask if they can program a key so they asked him if he had the spare key with him because they could do it very easily if he had the spare key he explained to them no he didn't have the spare key he came to visit from Orlando and that's where he's home. So the dealership was like, you have to tow the vehicle to us and then we'll be able to program you a key. They quoted him two grand. This is not including getting the car towed to the dealership. This is just straight up two grand just for the key and programming the key. And this is not a story that's, you know, unique to just him. A lot of people are affected by this. As long as they need a key for their vehicle, they have to deal with the dealership especially if like i said it's a push to start so if it's a key that has a chip in it those are usually easier to get you can just go to like autozone or home depot and they will usually get you a program then cut key for less than a hundred dollars you're not going to find your automaker stamp or the logo on the key it's very generic and it's an aftermarket key so this tool gives you the ability to program those keys yourself whether it's a key for key or a chipped key you can program it using this here's the mind blowing part this product right here costs less than six hundred dollars i started my own rebuild project which was a 2015 ford mustang the vehicle only came with one key fob i always intended on getting a second key but the dealership quoted me 500 and mind you 500 is on the cheaper end compared to like you know stories from other people filed it in the back of my head and i was like you know what maybe i can get away with just using one key having a car for one year there are a couple of issues i'm running into though that key fob is on its last leg um the case broke i had to get a new case now this new case is breaking and it's just a lot of issues buttons are sticking so i figured that i need to take care of this because number one if this key fob breaks i'm screwed and then number two uh if i lose the key 
I'm screwed. So after hearing about this product from uh, Sam Crack, I was like, this is a good time to, you know, invest in it and get a second key. So I purchased this. I also purchased a blank key fob from eBay for 30 bucks. And um, I'm gonna program it for my 2015 Mustang. And I'm gonna finally get two keys. I'm not an entrepreneur per se. So like, I'm not gonna be using this to make money on the side although that is an option and i can very well make money on the side you know obviously the the chipped keys are a little bit trickier because you're gonna have to get it cut and then programmed but key fobs can make some serious money i like this we have a case it comes with a case i like this it's pretty cool Ooh, wow all right so we got oh, that's cool they're locked so what do we have here so this is for accessories, I guess. I don't know what it, yeah, so accessories. That's what that's for, that's cool, that's cool. Um, we have the OBD connector, a USB, Type-C to USB-A. We have a flash drive. It's a micro SD adapter and a micro USB. What's this? Charger. Oh yeah, and there we go. What is this? This is the SD card. So they, get, they give you 16. So first off, we have to go to the website. All right, so let's let's jump to a computer and take care of this. I don't really know what comes next. I'm just doing my best, even though I'm so stressed out. Everything just feels like a test that I feel so depressed when I can't seem to get out But something deep inside won't let me quit I swear that I'm inspired by all this shit Tell me that I can't and I won't That's what guides me the most Your lies, I'll do what I want All right, so I'm in the car. Here's the new remote, and here's the old remote. To keep it together, I had to get a silicone jacket from eBay just to keep it together. I mean, look at it, even the metal, even this hook right here is missing from the key. And then I was so scared to lose this key that I went and I put two trackers on it. But anyway, here's the key. I'm gonna leave it outside right here. Just to show you that this key is not programmed yet. <laughs> Failed. <laughs> All right, so, and just to prove that this key is not programmed yet, I'm gonna take this key and uh, put it over here on my tripod, push on the brakes. Okay, so that's not for that's not far enough. Just to prove that this key is not programmed, I'm gonna take the original keys and I'm gonna just put it in the back of the car. All right, so the originals are in the back. And sure enough, we got a no key detected message. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in the OBD2 connector. So that's good. I'm gonna plug this in here. Key adding. So I M M O. Okay. Okay. We are in North America. It's a Ford. Ford. USA. Mustang. It's a 2015. So we want 2015 to 2019. And it's a smart key. Okay. And it's a keyless system. And we are going to add smart key. Process, three to 10 minutes. Need original key. Max key I can have is four. So it says I need the original key, so let me go ahead and go get that. All right, so I got the original key here. Okay, so we're gonna click add smart key. Turn on the ignition to the on position. Or open and close the driver's door. One. Okay. 
I'm gonna start the engine. Okay, and I'm going to add smart key. Okay, okay, okay. Establishing note, it is normal that the instrument panel turns black when performing this function. Okay. Security assessing, please wait about three to 10 minutes. Learned two keys. That's true, but I only have one. Okay. Place the smart key to be learned into the slot, which is usually in the armrest box. There it is. All right, so here's my blank key. I'm gonna put it in now. Okay. And I am going to hit okay. Learning key, please wait. That's it. Current number of keys is three. Okay. This is what threw me off. I thought this right here was a slot that you use to learn, uh, program the keys. I didn't know that it used the same slot already. In your Here's the key that's programmed now. Right, and so I'm gonna take off the car and I'm gonna leave this program, freshly programmed key in the car and I'm gonna take this and chug it outside. Chug it right there. Okay. All right, so I guess the first thing to do is see if it unlocks and locks the door, so. Well, it locks. It unlocks the trunk. That works too. Dang. All right, so I have the key with me here. I'm gonna step on the brake. What? What? I don't know why I'm so surprised. I honestly, I guess I, I thought it wouldn't work, but what? This is crazy. It actually works. What do you know? That is crazy. All right, this, this has got to be my new favorite tool now. Let's go back to the studio. Okay, so we're not done yet. There is one more test we got to do. This key, Fob, is for a 2009 Ford Focus. Uh, my brother was getting tired of walking with the keys and the key fob separately. So I found this on eBay, and what it is, it's a key flip key fob. There you go. Kind of like a switch blade. Obviously you have your remote control buttons. And then when you want to push the key down, just hold the button, flip it down. It's really cool. Let's take the Home Depot or AutoZone and see if they'll cut it for us. And then we can begin programming this key fob. Let's go. All right, so got the key cut. So you said that nobody, nowhere else wanted to cut this key. Nobody. Yeah, except for Ace Hardware. Home Depot said no. Yeah, uh, Walmart said no. Walmart said no. Lowe's said no. Well, I didn't check Lowe's. Okay. Advanced Auto Parts. They didn't. Uh, they didn't. Some AutoZone has it, but not the ones that I went to. Ad Discount Auto. They don't have it. Okay. So you took it to Ace Hardware and they cut it no problem for uh, what a dollar. A uh, dollar as long as you have a, an original. Gotcha. And you said they had to hand cut this, right? Yeah. They. They. You have to take this out of the housing in order for them to cut it. So that's probably what the issue is with Home Depot and Walmart because they rely on, their system is automated. That's why they have their own keys because yeah. you can just plug it in and the machine does everything. All right, so we got the key. It fits in the ignition, right? It and it turns and everything, but it doesn't start the car, obviously. this The keypads, it works, but they're not um linked to the car yet it's uh safe to say ace did a good job cutting it because yep. it works fine Somewhere down here. I think this is it. Right. enter the key and turn the ignition on enter the key to be learned turn the ignition on so it's on okay learning keys learning failed it seems Enter the key to be learned and turn the ignition on. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh wait, you turn, in, you turn on the ignition. No yeah. way! It failed. I think you need the original key. See, need original key. Um. <laughs> Alright, so we ran into a problem. The key we had wasn't the original. So we went and we found the original key and we're gonna try again. We're not starting the car. 
Ignition on. Original. Original key. Okay. Accessing learned key two. Okay. Take that out. Put this in maybe. Maybe. The instruction doesn't say. Wait. Ah, <laughs> come on. Okay. Insert the key to be learned and turn the ignition on. Okay. Establishing vehicle security accessing learned keys two. Learning key. Please wait. Learn key two. Okay. Learning fail. It's not learning. Maybe it's trying to learn what's the original. Oh, that's what you mean. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see then. So, okay, we'll put that in. It's staying on for three seconds. Now it comes on. Add key. No signal. Was key there. learning fail. No signal key. Okay. Ah, man, I thought. <laughs> Damn. No, I have no idea. <laughs> so key learning fail. We got security fail. Forty sixty three. Yeah, DST, DST forty. 40 yeah. yeah, I think that's our issue. And then we could just like look for one and just swap out the key. That's what I was saying. Yeah, that would probably work. DST forty, right? Yeah, yeah. DST. All right. So here's a quick little update. Uh, unfortunately, we were not able to program the two thousand nine. Ford Focus key using the T-Ninja. We tried, believe me, we tried. That video, it's actually a couple of hours long. We spent almost two hours just trying different combinations of things, trying to get the key to program. But however, the T-Ninja 1000 was not able to initiate a mobilizer into a programming mode. Every time we would attempt to, we would get a uh, message saying that fail. And no matter what combination we tried, whether we started the car or we had it in an ACC, we would just get the same results. Fail, 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 fail. So my brother thought maybe it was the key that we purchased from uh, eBay, but uh, I don't think it was this key because we wouldn't even get to that part to where you program the key. When we put the original keys into focus and it's initiating the keys that need to be learned, that's where it would fail. So it wouldn't even get to the process to where we can program this key, which tells us that it was more than likely the immobilizer on the 2009 Focus. Something was wrong. I don't know what the heck is going on, but that immobilizer is either shot or it could be the T-Ninja 1000 too. Maybe there's something wrong with that, but we didn't stop there. We actually waited a week and then we attempted to do it again. And uh, this time, my brother, with his theory that maybe it was the key, he purchased this key. This is not the original uh, focus key that I engraved in the back. No, this is a brand new one that he bought because he was convinced that it was the key that was the problem and uh, not, the, uh, not the car or the T-Ninja 1000. Same exact problem. So I came up with an idea, uh, a bit unorthodox, but I didn't see why it wouldn't work. Understanding how the chips look in these key fobs i told my brother why don't we cut open one of his spare keys because uh, the focus used to be my car when i gave it to my brother i gave him two official ford keys the loop at the top broke so you were unable to put it on your key ring so what i had done is uh before i gave it to him i went to home depot and i had home depot program this key for the focus and it had a loop so where you can attach it to your key ring and this is the key I gave him. And so I asked him, how do you feel about ripping open that key and removing the chip and putting it into the eBay key? And before I can even blink my eyes, as you can see, he teared open the key pretty good. He used a Dremel tool. And see that thing right there, that black part? I could take it out for you. But this is the chip and it comes right out. This is the chip that was in that key from Home Depot. So what we did was we pulled out that chip from this key from Home Depot, and then we opened this key up. Pretty easy to open. You just take off the back, and then you can see the board, and this board right here just comes right out from the housing. And when it comes right out of the housing, guess what you see there? So this thing right here, this pop part, this is the chip. And this is the original chip that came with this key fob. So what we ended up doing was we ripped this off because it's just glued onto this board. And we glued the chip from the Home Depot key onto that board. And then we put it back in. We put the cover back on, obviously. And then we started the car. All right, let's try and see if this key works.
It works. What? Yeah. Yeah. The, the fame question. A uh, short while after the series went off the air, you. Although I suggested the idea, I didn't know if it would work or not. You know, it was a long shot, but it worked. The car started right up, no problem. Um, unfortunately, like I said, T1000 Ninja had nothing to do with programming this key. It was just a matter of swapping over the chip from this key that was programmed by Home Depot for about 40 bucks and putting that chip in here. And that's how we ended up getting it to work. But we still have one more car we want to try this device with. And that is a Ford F-150. I believe it's a 2019, 2020. Uh, my cousin lost his key. He purchased a uh, new key. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to try and program that to see if it'll work. It's not push to start. It is a keyblade. So let's see if we can get that key programmed. All right, we're here in, uh, in the F-150. What year did you say this was? 2019? Yes, sir. 2019 F-150. Let's see if, if you get success with this or if it's like focus. And turn the key to be learned and turn the ignition on. Security assessing. Please wait about three to ten minutes. Something is going, something's going on. I see the cluster fan flickering. I mean, it's more than what the Focus did, so... Did the Mustang do this? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Just don't deprogram my only key. <laughs> I think the computer on the Focus was shot. Do you think it has anything to do because it's manual? I don't think so. Because you have to keep it started, right? Yeah, you have to keep it started. What else can this thing do? Uh, you can erase all the keys. You can uh, program a key if there's no keys available. Oh, so you can er erase my key if I don't find it, the other one? No, it would erase all the keys that are registered to the vehicle. Oh. All right, turn the ignition off. All right. Okay, enter the key to be learned and turn the ignition on. I'm gonna be pocket here. Learn the key, please wait. Success! All right. Works. Is that time already? <laughs> All right. Time to close up the video. So let's jump right into the likes and dislikes about this T Ninja. Number one, I like how portable it is. You know, it comes in its own briefcase or case, and there's extra storage to store uh, things like extra remotes and whatnot. So it's really portable. I really don't notice it when I put it in the car and take it to like Orlando for the weekend and do some work for someone while I'm there. I don't notice it's in the car. It doesn't take up much space. Number two, I love how how user friendly it is. So easy to operate. I didn't even have to use the manual part while I was programming the Mustang key. Had no idea about the interface. I was just going with the flow, but the way they laid it out was beautiful. Unlike the Sony ZV-E10, but it was really easy to operate. And I think that if I handed this off to someone else to use, they would be able to use it no problem. Number three, and this is a big one, it's affordable. And you don't realize how affordable this thing is until you go out and you get a quote for a replacement key fob for your vehicle. Like I said before, this price ranges anywhere between 50 bucks and can go all the way up to like five grand. So sky's the limit and you really have no control how much you can expect to pay. I'll give you a perfect example. Obviously this thing doesn't cut the key blade. You're gonna have to get the key blades cut if your car uses a key blade system. You need to get those blades cut and then you can program it using the T-Ninja. However, finding someone to cut it, that's the challenge. My brother in Jacksonville, Florida found an Ace Hardware that cut the key for him for a dollar. We told our cousin in Orlando about it. He tried multiple Ace Hardware locations and all of them refused to cut it. He ended up taking it to a locksmith who cut it for 50 bucks. And this is just a cut. This is what they charge just cutting a key that does not belong to them. I asked him about like, you know, how much does it cost to have like a cut and programmed key from them? And they quoted him $150, which is still not bad, but it is a generic key, just like the uh, generic key for the Focus. Nothing fancy 
and one hundred and fifty dollars. That that's that's a lot because I only paid fifty for my generic key from Home Depot, which was cut and copied. Getting this thing is affordable, but there is a gray area when it comes to Keyblade keys. Number four, software updates. This thing does have software updates. I don't know with a hundred percent certainty but it does have the potential to have a long life span right because as newer vehicles come out on the market the company can add it to their database and then push those databases to us users using the software that we use to update it so the potential for this lasting a long time is there. Now, those are the likes. What are the dislikes? Number one, vague instruction. So there are particular words you can use to phrase something, you know, like a sentence, an instruction, and the way they do it, I don't like. So there's a portion in instruction where they say, insert the key to be learned. That term, insert the key to be learned, that can apply to both the blank key and the original key. A better word that would have made it easier to understand is blank for the key that you just bought that you need to program and then original for you know the original key that would have been a much more easier term to understand had they used that word to describe uh the original and the blank key uh, but because they use learned it's hard to try to figure out what did they mean did they mean the blank key or did they mean the original key i don't know what you guys think let me know in the comment section below. Number two, this thing does not program your remote key fob. It will program your key so your key can start your car, but then when it comes to the remote fob to unlock and lock your vehicle, you're on your own with that. The T1000 Ninja will not program those for you unless you have a push to start system because the Mustang was pushed to start. And when I programmed that key with the car, the uh, remote buttons for unlock and lock and remote start, all of that worked just fine. I didn't have to program that separately. But if you have a Keyblade system, you have to program your remote key fob separately from the key itself. It wasn't a big deal with the focus. We actually programmed the focus with no issues. When it came to my cousin's uh, F-150, we tried multiple articles online. We just could not program the remote key fob and I'm not sure exactly why. We were short on time, so he said he was gonna play around with it you know, in the near future, see if you can figure it out. I do wish the T1000 Ninja helped out with programming, you know, your remote key fobs. But that's just nitpicking because, you know, it's not technically part of the key. It's a separate board. So I understand why the T1000 Ninja doesn't deal with uh, remote key fobs. Push to start systems are different. So I could see why it would program the remote key fob as well but that's just my opinion. Number three, you do need a PC to update this. This is like a, uh, a good and a bad thing. It's good because you know, you're not gonna get these annoying prompts telling you to update your system. No, cause you know, the system doesn't connect to Wi-Fi. It doesn't connect to a network. So it doesn't know there's a later version. So you're never gonna get those messages, thankfully. But the downfall is that when you do want to update it, you're going to have to plug it into your computer and run their software to update everything, both the firmware and the uh, vehicle database. And then number four, lastly, poor customer service. I didn't really get to mention it, but the first unit I received from Top Gun was a defective unit. I think it was called the MCC chip. It was defective and so it would not boot into the firmware. And when I contacted Top Gun and told them about the issue, they said, yeah, MCC chip is a fatal error and for unfortunately, I'm gonna have to get a replacement. Here's a number to call to get a replacement. And I was just dumbfounded. Like, you know, your support, your customer support, you're supposed to be helping me with issues with this product. And because it's completely kaput, you're like, here, call this number and tell them you need a replacement. That, that, that's bad customer service. I'm sorry. But there you go. Those are my likes and dislikes about this unit. I really do think this unit is a must have for those car enthusiasts who have multiple vehicles. Um, even those who often lose their keys, I think this is very important for you to have. I would more suggest it to those who have pushed to start. However, if you do have a keyblade system, it is possible to get the blade cut. Know that it's gonna more than likely uh, cost you probably more money than the key fob itself. Just be prepared for that. But even so, like, you know, he bought the key fob for $25. 
he paid an extra $40 to get it cut. So what, that's $65 for buying the key fob and getting it cut? Cause I programmed it for him. I obviously didn't charge him. So $65 is still a good deal, you know, to get a key that looks factory and to have it programmed and working with your vehicle. That's still a pretty good deal. Now, obviously if you have push to start, you can cut the cost for cutting the blade. Cause you know, you, there is no blade to cut. All you have to do is program the key and bam, that's it. I paid 30 bucks for the Mustang key fob and programmed it within five minutes. Definitely recommend it for those two types of people. Anyway, don't wanna ramble too much. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Give me a like. It really helps out the channel and helps us with the YouTube algorithm. Also, comments help with the algorithm too. So any questions related or unrelated to the video, leave them below, you know, let's have some fun. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.